to start a new segment that I hope you all like, and it's called the 100 Hour Club. And this is where me and Brendan are going to talk about games that we've either invested 100 hours in together or separate, just games that you love. I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be 100 hours. It's just that's kind of that's the mark of a game that has totally sucked you in and taken over your life. Because if you think about it, it's like a game taking at least four days out of your life. Of just you straight imagine. playing without sleep exactly. <laughs> or eating. Nothing. Or it's just straight four days. Imagine that. That's that's what we're talking about with 100 Hour Club. Just some of those games that sucked you in and wouldn't let you go. And the very first game that will be inaugurated into the 100 Hour Club is a game that me and Brendan definitely, like, like not even a question, put in together 100 hours playing each other, let alone from what we played separately. Yeah. And that is Battlefront two the original not the new one that's coming out not to have anything to do with the ea series that's going on we're talking about the pandemic playstation 2 battlefront series which came out back in i want to say 2005 and just absolutely just killed it it was the best selling star wars game ever when it came out it should still be the best selling star wars game ever because it did so many great things like think about this what was the very first game you ever played online against other people on a console uh, Omega Strain, but Battlefront Two. <laughs> okay, you, I, I happened to play Omega, Omega Strain before. That, Battlefront Two was my first <laughs> online console gaming experience. Now I played Quake Online on the PC a little bit here and there, but this was my first real, you know, online multiplayer experience with Battlefront Two, and this it was, was just better than uh, Omega Strain Two. So just yeah. <laughs> no, so there you go. But this this did so many things. For number one for the genre, this is the best third person shooter ever made, bar none. I don't care. I can't think of anything that even comes close to it as a third person shooter. It had so much fun and 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 even though you're playing the same what? I mean, when me and Brendan would play these games together, there's a mode called Galactic Conquest, where you pretty much just try to take over each other's planets and whoever takes over everybody else's planets wins. Well, there's two planets that is almost impossible to defend. And so we would trade these planets back literally. For what, like yep. a month or two before we would restart everything again? You well, know, we eventually someone would would plow through and, and get it, but yeah, it would it would take months, months. Uh, at like a stalemate somewhere in the middle, or maybe someone's down on their luck for a while. But there's planets that are just so hard to defeat. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's planets so, that are, planets so hard that are to impossible defend. to defend. It's just like your home planets for each one. Hoth, if you were the rebels, or uh, what was it? Uh, Endor, Mustafar, Endor, Endor, if you were the Empire. Damn near impossible to defend those planets, especially if you were the rebels on Hoth. You had no chance of defending your home planet, none at all. It was, both, it was both just were really hard to defend. Yeah, and and then those planets were just gone, and but they give you huge advantages for taking them, and, yeah. and and then you had the the different the depth that came into it. Where on the surface it doesn't really, it just feels like a regular capture the point. And again, this is one of the first capture the point type multiplayer games that I ever remember uh, being put out there. This was really what kind of my eyes brought this you know control uh the zones Mm -hmm. things that you see in domination with call of duty you see in control with destiny you see it in a lot of different things and this is the first time i really remember this going out there there was a little bit in um in uh golden eye on the n64 but it was a mode that no one really cared about it wasn't that good it it was not it it was not as well developed um and there's a little bit of this kind of thing in some some PC games by that time, maybe, maybe Halo. But again, this is what really not, yeah. made this a staple from all multiplayer shooters. You will have that mode in all multiplayer and they did shooters it on the console because well. so. of Battlefront 2. And maybe not because, but I'm going to give it strictly to Battlefront 2 because it made it so much fun. And that was the primary battle mode. And again, you were fighting on the same, what, 15 planets at most, like 14 planets at most. Mm-hmm. And most and of the time, we did it for like hours it. and hours and hours on end because it was so good. Every fight was a little bit different because, hey, maybe one fight I brought a hero in there. Maybe one fight I brought extra reinforcements. Maybe one fight I made my guy's guns a little stronger. Everything you did could change the outcome so that every battle you fought was totally unique, even though you're fighting it in the same place. I mean, Yavin 4, we must have fought battles on that place hundreds and hundreds of times. Never got old. And they made Never got old. playing through... Um, still progressive like you were still doing something mm-hmm. when you were playing these these long things or these plants over and over their award system not not necessarily the the first time an award system like that was there but it was done well it still gave you incentive to keep playing to get to the next 
you know, stage of an award set. Well, to it get gave to you a reason weapon. to change classes. It, it made you mm -hmm. be like, okay, I'm really good with the stormtrooper, but if I upgrade this guy, the engineer, a little bit more, maybe I could be better. You know, I can hack tanks better, and that'll really change the title tide of battle. Yeah. You know, and made... that'll be really good in certain. They they did a good job so that certain mm -hmm. ones were better in certain levels. So your engineer will be great on ones where there's a lot of vehicles if you get the the hacking. Um, thing skill up, but he's not going to be very good on the ones where there are no vehicles. So yeah. you'll want to switch up for, for those. Yeah, and not only that, we didn't even start talking about the space battles. We were just talking about the ground battles that were awesome. The space battles were amazing. You had to flying into somebody else's hangar and then mm -hmm. throwing the little bombs at their, their, their main nodes and destroying their ship from the inside out is amazing feeling. It's a I, great feeling. I, I never won the space battles, by the way. That was the only thing Brendan always had me on was the space. <laughs> that, and that also became that a strategy one for, uh, for Galactic Conquest sometimes because you would, if you, put your fleet around a, a planet that you needed to defend, that it was hard to defend, um, then you could fight them. They would have to fight you you first, so you could defend a planet that way too. I would say, though, that I thought the, the space battles were probably the weaker side oh, of it. Oh, yeah, but it was still But they were fun. still fun. They were still yeah. fun to have that variety. Like, after I did every once in a while get tired of, of doing space battles after a while because um, with another friend that I had Galactic Conquest with, we would have uh, it was usually like our home planet points were right next mm -hmm. to each other in one of the game modes like i think uh the um republic versus uh cis the their home planets were actually next to each other so we would defend our guys by putting our our uh our our fleets on top of them so we actually had a lot of space that battles just space, back and forth battles. yeah um so that got a little bit tiring after a while but it was it was still pretty good i always said that yeah. all they really needed to do for battlefront 3 was give us same game a few new maps and few, improve tweak the graphics. tweak the space battles the the mm -hmm. flying mechanics were, were pretty good just add us add a little bit more whatever and and, you would be solid. And we literally put hundreds of hours just into the multiplayer, a hundred hours plus into the multiplayer. Into That's Galactic not even talking Conquest. about the time into Galactic Conquest. Yes. Very, very more, much yeah. more specific one, one multiplayer mode. We love to battle back and forth, but that's not even talking about the campaign mode, which was mm -hmm. amazing. It told a really, really cool story. If you took the time to really read about it, this is where I believe the introduction of the 501st happened. Now you saw a lot about the 501st in like clone wars and different things like that. They started coming up, they become, and, but I believe, and they probably were mentioned in the books, um, but this is where the 501st really hit the mainstream of star Wars fandom. This was the first place that I heard about the 501st that a lot mm -hmm, of people did. Yes. There, there was a book. Uh, they were included in a book before. And the 501st really starts as the, it's a fan club you know, of mm -hmm. people that dress as stormtroopers. In, in real yeah, realistic. Yeah, yeah. And then they incorporated that into a game, you know, which just is such a cool full mm -hmm. circle of uh, between the movies, the game, the fans, and just brings them all together and, and kind of creates their own mythos. And, they and do the give story them a great was story. amazing. Yes. Yeah, it, it was, was an amazing story playing it all the way through. It gave you plenty of depth to each mission. Yes, it was still go capture points, but it felt unique every time you had a new story mission when you had different objectives to do that were, it was pretty much always capture points, but it, they spiced it up a little things like they would throw new heroes your way. And so that felt a lot of different. Maybe you have to capture this point and destroy this first before you can take over everything. But the story itself was so good that I played that thing through like mm -hmm. probably at least seven or eight times. It wasn't super long. Don't get me wrong. But it also, every time you played through it, it still helped you progress. Yes. And the th great thing was I that like the single that. player campaign helped you progress in multiplayer, just like multiplayer helped you progress in the single player because you could get those achievements. Uh, like I remember one, the one that I specialized in was if you get something like eight blaster rifle kills, you get a special blaster rifle that shoots out. It's like a pulse rifle and um, it it's like one shot, headshot everybody. And you Every time, if you got over 250 or 500 of those medals, I can't remember exactly what it was. You just started the game with that automatically, so you didn't have to worry about the getting that kill streak reward. Yeah. And so I would start off the game every single time with that super blaster rifle. Brendan was an engineer, and yeah, he, so what I would you the, start the, off with? The ratchet, uh, his shotgun is what yeah, the I got. super shotgun. Yeah. And 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 we built our characters the way we like to play, but that didn't mean we weren't going to switch it up a hundred times. I think I almost maxed out everything. By the end of everything, by that, and I believe Brendan was pretty much the same. We, I, we just max out everything we um, could get. 
Yeah, I got most things maxed out. The, the, I didn't get maxed out. There was only two. Out. Well, there was only two that I couldn't really get to to legendary status, which were the um, uh, the sniper sniping was was not very was not very easy in the game. No, it was not easy at all. Um, and the although the sniper class could do some cool stuff, I, I didn't use them very much, and it was hard to get those headshots to get the award for it. Um, and the uh, the destruction one where you're the heavy. Which you had to like destroy vehicles with the heavy troopers rocket launcher by hitting which, weak points. Yeah, yeah I could never figure out which easy. where the weak points were. <laughs> so I don't think yeah, I ever so. got a single uh, one of those awards. And see, and that's another thing we can say that there is. It's such a, a great game, and again, so much depth to this game. I hate saying the same word over and over, but it's there. It, it, even though it looks shallow on the surface, it, there's just so much more to it. We it's can play the game for up. hundreds of hours and yeah. still have stuff to figure out yeah you know yeah. that's it that's was, the great thing it was easy to pick up and understand what you're doing so you mm-hmm. can just get going and but there was skill to to learn there was more things to to find they had a, mm-hmm. a good variety in the in the game modes for its purpose and it was just it just fun the whole way through so so that is our very first hundred hour club game there will be many more to come uh we, this is be the, our new segment but hit us up let us know did you play Battlefront 2 as much as us? And if so, Brian is Brendan, better than Brendan. Just say correct. I mean, I think I probably have a better win streak. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Actually, know. I don't I know. We probably like completed con- like two. <laughs> yeah, we two, never completed. We just hit a stalemate and then restarted. No, we but... definitely finished it a couple of times, but it just it know, took it months. A couple of times. <laughs> it yeah, took well, months. I mean, of... Months, like no <laughs> joke, months. Like there would be weeks where we would just fight over the same two planets. <laughs> you know? and when okay, we say I took months. that one. Okay, I took that one. I took that one back. 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 I took that one. That's and when we say months, like. we don't mean like oh, we only played every once in a while. We were at least playing every once a week night. for five hours against yes, each other. Yeah, well, I guess that's at true. Least. Yeah, we would. I guess yeah, we'd get together at least on like a Friday or Saturday night and have a marathon. Of that. And, and sometimes and it, it'd be like once, once like you know, some weeks we might do it every night for an hour or two. <laughs> so. There was a lot of Battlefront going on in this house. That's that's one thing that's for sure. But again, hit us up. Let us know what you think. Uh, are you as big of a fan of that as us? And give us some suggestions for what your 100-hour club games might be. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. Google Plus and Facebook. Oh, there's good ways to get 